Since 1967, Stroud Water Research Center has focused on one thing, fresh water. By advancing knowledge and stewardship of freshwater systems through global research, education, and watershed restoration. Learn more at stroudcenter.org. story on Action News tonight is the height of the nor'easter. Well, clearing the snow was an all-day process for crews around the Trenton Not transportation. Nice experience on most of our roadways. Anyone who lives in a snow-prone area knows that road salt is the lifeblood of the winter season. Salt is necessary for safe driving and, and walking things, but we have to decide how much is too much. What the price is we're paying for that salt. The ice melting chemical that helps us continue to move about safely in the winter is the very same thing that is starting to harm the waterways. Anything they put on a road, anything they put on a parking lot, when it rains, that washes off and moves toward the stream and eventually ends up in the stream. Entomologists John Jackson and David Funk have dedicated their lives to studying the effects of pollution like salt on fresh water by focusing on the smallest of swimmers. Dave's over looking for mayflies, stoneflies, caddisflies, our pollution sensitive species. Right now, we're not finding many. When bugs are abundant, it's clear the stream is healthy. The reason why it's good to see mayflies in a stream is that mayflies are sensitive to pollution and they disappear when the water quality goes bad. No bugs and something is definitely wrong. And the question is, what is it? We have one indication that it's salt. In this area, we apply two to 400 pounds of salt each winter per person. That's 10 million pounds of salt per year running into our waterways. So we're concerned with salt because it's toxic. It kills insects, it kills fish, it kills algae, it kills plants. The question is, how much salt is toxic? And that's where we're doing the research. To test the water quality, John uses a conductivity meter to measure how much salt is in the stream. In healthy water, the conductivity should register between 100 and 200 microsiemens. So we're at 475, about double, maybe more, than what we would normally expect in a stream like this. The question now is, is what's it look like upstream? Just a mile away, this serene stream winds its way into modern life. This is a classic urban stream. We're here because this small stream has houses on this side, and a major parking lot over here for a mall, and then a major highway over there. And in the winter, salt's applied to all the roads and all the parking lots and all the driveways to keep them safe. And all that salt is migrating to this stream. 2064. So it's 2064, that's high. That's 40 times higher than normal. The salt's not just a winter problem anymore. Because of the prolonged and frequent application of salt in the wintertime, levels in groundwater is coming up. In order to get a close-up view, Dave created a special camera to get a clear picture of what's going on under the surface. I've taken lots of pictures of terrestrial insects and things. It was much more challenging to get pictures of the things that I work with that I really like, like mayflies and things. Mayflies are his muse and his primary lab subjects in the quest to answer the question, how much salt is too much? So in here is where we do all these tests. And all these racks of coolers will be full of different vessels with different concentrations of salt. Mayflies are sort of the canary in the coal mine. They're known to be that, right? So we start with them, we figure if mayflies can tolerate this much salt, then most of the other ones probably will too. In these jars, we rear mayflies through their entire life at salt concentrations like we saw in the field to see what the effect is. Do they survive it? Could they have a viable population? Each jar will have a different concentration and will determine what is a safe level of salt and what isn't. The salt issue is an easy one to understand, but sadly, not as easy to fix. There's been so much road salt used in, in the last 10 years that the background levels are rising. We see that, we know that, that they're rising. We don't know how far they're gonna go. And that's a conversation science feeds information into. 
but society has to help us in that conversation by saying prioritizing. We may have to cut back on the amount of salt we use. And so that may be just using it more efficiently or it may be we don't salt every storm. The salt in this stream is, is an important outcome of trying to keep people safe. The key now is try to create some balance. How do we keep people safe in driving and walking, but also keep the water cleaner than it currently is.